Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, we'll continue our discussion today on few more concept of uh, theory of demand like elasticity of supply or how the ch price and quantity changes when there is a imposition of the, the taxes and uh, when there is a legal imposition from the government when it comes to equilibrium price, how it affect on the demand and supply and whether it leads to a equilibrium or whether it leads to surplus or uh, deficit. So, if you remember in the last class we talked about uh, the budget line, we talk about the consumer equilibrium and if you remember consumer equilibrium is the condition where the budget line is tangent to the indifference curve and at that point the consumer maximizes the satisfaction uh, with the limited income constraint. Then we discuss about the law of equi marginal utility when the consumer has to make the choices between two goods. Uh, with the limited income constant, how they generally take a decision and the thumb rule for this decision is that whatever the utility, whatever the money income they are spending on each of these goods at least they will get the same level of utility. Then we discuss about the price, income and substitution effect and uh, it, it if you remember it has been um, calculated uh, the price effect which is the summation of the substitution effect and the income effect and price effect generally comes from the decrease in the income or income in increase in the income which results in two other effect that is income effect and the substitution effect. Then we introduce the concept of uh, consumer surplus and consumer surplus is nothing but the change in the or maybe the difference in the what the consumer is willing to pay for it and what the consumer is actually paying for it. Suppose if you have a plan for a typical range of goods and when you are going to market and you are paying a different market price for it, whatever you would wish to pay for it or willing to pay for it and what actually you are paying, the difference is generally known as the consumer surplus. So, today we will take a numerical example to understand the concept of the consumer surplus. So, if the numerical example we have one uh, demand function that is P is equal to uh, 40 minus 2 Q and uh, suppose this is the demand function of the petrol and initially the petrol price is 25 rupees and uh, do, there is a imposition of ta tariff from the government and that leads to increase in the uh, increase in the price of petrol from 25 rupees to rupees 28. Then we have one additional information the weekly income of the consumer is equal to rupees 3000. Now, we will see uh, with the help of this uh, information how we can uh, how we can uh, find out what is the consumer surplus. So, we need to calculate the consumer surplus surplus or maybe we can say the loss in the consumer surplus from due to increase in the price to from 25 to 28 per liter. Now, what is the first thing we need to do? We need to draw the demand curve and to draw the demand curve what are the information given to us? The information is P is equal to 40 minus 2 Q. So, the value of slope is minus 2, intercept value is 40. So, with this uh, P is equal to uh, 40 minus 2 Q, we will see how we can draw the demand curve over here first need to find out what is the extreme value of P and Q. Uh, P and Q of petrol 
okay because here p is the prior, here is the good is petrol so we need to find out what is the extreme value of p and what is the extreme value of q so putting q is equal to 0 in the equation we get p is equal to 40 and when we put p is equal to 0 then q is equal to 20 so joining this point we will get the uh, demand curve and substituting value of p by 25 and 28 we get the uh, value of q is equal to 6 and q is equal to 75 so initially we'll put the value of p is equal to 25 we get the value of q is equal to 6 and when we put the p value is equal to 28 we get the value q which is equal to 7.5. Then uh, once we get the extreme value of p, we get the extreme value of q, we need to uh, when we get the uh, put the value of p is equal to 25 and p is equal to 28, we get the value which is q is equal to 6 and q is equal to 7.5. Now, the next task is that how to find out the consumer surplus because we know that there is a change in the quantity demanded that is 6 to 7.5 when there is a imposition of tax from uh, uh, imposition of tariff and that leads to change in the price from 25 rupees to 28 rupees. Now, let us see how we can find that in case of the demand curve. So, this is 25, this is 28 this is uh, this is maybe 6 and this is maybe 7.5 now how will find out the consumer surplus so 0 0.5 multiplied by 40 minus 25 into 7.5 that gives us the consumer surplus when the price is equal to 25 now when the price increase to 28, then this is the 0 0.5 40 minus 28 multiplied by 6. So, this will give us 6, this will give us 75, 7.5 we get that is the that gives us the value which is equal to rupees 36. So, the first one is uh, 56.25 and the second one gives us the uh, value which is equal to 36. So, what is the loss in the consumer surplus? Loss in the consumer surplus is 56.25 minus 36, which gives us the value which is equal to 20 into 25. Okay. So, this is price is 25, quantity demanded is 7.5 price increases from 25 to 28 quantity demanded is 6 when the price was 25 this is the total consumer surplus this triangle but when the price increases from 25 to 28 this is the consumer surplus now because of increase in the price the loss in the consumer surplus is this area so this total area suppose this is a this is b and c initially when the consumer surplus is a b c the total consumer surplus is 56.25 and how we have got this this is to find out the area of any triangle what is the formula the formula is half into base into price so 0 0.5 multiplied by 40.25 that gives us the base uh, gives us the price and 7.5 gives us the base. So, in this case 56.25 is the consumer surplus price increases from 25 to 28 that leads to increase in the decrease in the quantity demanded from 7.5 to 6 and also this area is the loss in the consumer surplus. So, the loss in the consumer surplus how to find out if you find out the area before uh, change in the price what is the area of consumer surplus and what is the area of consumer surplus after changing the price. So, after changing the price A B 1 C 1 is the change in the or maybe the new consumer surplus that leads to 
how to find out what is the value for this again the same formula to find out the value in a triangle that is 0 0.5 multiplied by base into price. So, 48 minus 28 is the price and 6 is the base that leads to 36 and uh, the in this case the difference between the consumer surplus is 56 minus 25 minus 36 leads to 20.25. So, as you know if you remember in the previous class this loss in the consumer surplus has two parts because the change in the consumer surplus is due to change in the price. So, the entire loss in the consumer surplus has two parts one is producer surplus and second one is the dead weight lost. Producer surplus is what the amount what goes to the producer account because of change in the price and dead weight loss generally uh, not a part of consumer account or producer account because it neither goes to the consumer nor goes to the producer. This is basically the loss in the quantity demanded due to change in the price. So, now in this case we have identified what is the consumer surplus before and after changing price and we have also identified what is the loss in the consumer surplus. So, the loss in the consumer surplus is 20.25 what we have got over here. Now, we will see this 20.25 how much goes to the dead weight loss and how much goes to the uh, in through the account of producer in the form of the producer surplus. Now, how we will find out who, uh, what is uh, wh how much amount goes to the producer and how much amount goes to the dead weight loss. So, producer goes to the, the total amount what goes to the producer is the increase in the price and the may be the what if the change in the price and whatever the change in the quantity demanded. So, we will see what is producer surplus over here. This is the change in the price 28 minus 25 multiplied by 6 minus 0. So, this comes to 18 and uh, what is dead weight loss? dead weight loss we need to calculate again the area of the triangle. So, this is 0 0.5 then base into that is 7.5 minus 6. So, base into height. So, that comes to 2.25. So, 2.25 is the dead weight loss and 18 is the producer surplus. If you add 18 and 2.25 that gives us the loss in the consumer surplus that is 20.25. So, generally this consumer surplus also the application of the consumer surplus in the um, real world scenario when there is a imposition of tariff or when the price changes the market price changes uh, generally whatever the consumer surplus the consumer is uh, getting uh, that gets reduces and the reduction in the consumer surplus partly goes to the producer account in the form of increase in the price and partly generally goes in the form of the dead weight loss because neither it is a part of the consumer account nor it is part of the producer account. Then we will come to the um, uh, some new topics today new concept of theory of demand or some more concept of theory of demand like elasticity of supply this is just the counterpart of relationship between price and supply. Uh, if you remember the same thing what we discuss in the context of uh, price and quantity demanded in case of elasticity of demand. Then the when there is a imposition of tax how it leads to or what kind of effect it has on the price and quantity and when the price fixed by uh, law or when the, when the government fixes up the price may be in terms of ceiling price or the floor price what happens to the quantity demanded what happens to the price. So, we will start the concept elasticity of supply and elasticity of supply is nothing but the relationship between the price and quantity supply. So, as law of supply says that there is a positive relationship between the price and supply. So, whenever there is a increase in the price there is a decrease there is a increase in the quantity supply and whenever there is a decrease in the price also there is a decrease in the quantity supply. It means there is a positive relationship between the price and quantity supply, but 
elasticity of supply will help us to identify what is the magnitude of change in the quantity supply when there is a change in the price. So, suppose if price changes by 2 percent, whether the quantity supply also changes by 2 percent or the quantity supply changes more than 2 percent or quantity supply changes less than 2 percent. What is the sensitivity of the sellers or what is the sensitivity of the supplier when there is a increase or decrease in the price that we capture through the elasticity of supply. So, if the uh, supplier is more sensitive generally the elasticity of supply is on a higher side, if the supply is less sensitive then the elasticity of supply is on a, a lower side. So, if it is higher side then it is a elastic, if it is lower side then it is a case of the inelastic supply. So, elasticity of supply is nothing but the measurement of sensitivity of the supplier with respect to change in the price in both the direction when there is a increase and when there is a decrease in the price of the goods. So, how to calculate this elasticity of supply? Generally, we know that when there is a change in the price that leads to change in the quantity supply. So, uh, we will calculate the elasticity of supply using the percentage change in the quantity supply associated with the percentage change in the price. So, here quantity supply is the dependent variable and P is the independent variable. Whenever there is a change in the P that leads to change in the quantity supply and elasticity of supply the captures the percentage change in the quantity supply associated with the percentage change in the price. Now, what is uh, elastic supply? A product has elastic supply when the price change causes significant change in the quantity supply. What would have to be true of a product to allow a seller to quickly increase the production if the market price goes up? So, we know that um, whenever there is a change in the price, if there is a significant change in the quantity, uh, quantity supplied, then this is the case of elastic supply. But here the maybe when you take this to a real world situation, here the question comes is it possible to produce the seller immediately when there is a increase in the price, whether it is possible to increase the production immediately because there is a timeline required or there is a time period request to produce the product. So, we can interpret in a different way that whatever getting produced by the producer, everything is not getting sold in the market. Part of it always there in the inventory or part of it always there in the stock and whenever there is an increase in the price that leads the supplier to supply more into the market for the consumer, but when there is a decrease in the price they generally keep more in the inventory or in the stock. So, in this case uh, we can say that uh, a change in the price is uh, may be less than the change in the quantity demanded. So, in case of elastic supply the percentage change in the QS has to be greater than the percentage change in the P. So, if it is infinite, generally it is a case of a perfectly elastic uh, supply. Now, we will see uh, how we graphically represent this elastic supply curve. Generally, if you look at in case of uh, highly elastic whether it is supply, whether it is demand curve, the slope is generally high and that leads to the flatter supply curve. So, if price changes the quantity supplied changes a lot it means any small change in the price leads to a good amount of change in the quantity supply and that is the reason the slope is on a higher side and this creates a flatter curve. So, if you look at uh, the graph in the slide Q is the Q is represented in the x axis that is the quantity and P is represented on the y axis that is the price. Initially, the price is P 1, quantity demanded is Q 1. Now, when the P price increases from P 1 to P 2, quantity demanded also increases from Q 1 to Q 2 and that leads to a greater change in the quantity demanded when there is a small change in the price. So, if you look at in the graph, then Q 1 and Q 2 is greater than much, much, much greater than P 1 and P 2 and we can interpret here is that this is the case of elastic supply curve because any small change in the price leads to a greater change in the quantity supply. So, in case of elastic supply curve, the supply curve is always flatter and because the change in the quantity supply is more than the change in the price associated with this. Then we will see how it happens in case of a inelastic supply and inelastic supply is 1 
for the price changes causes very little change in the quantity supply. It means the percentage change in the quantity supply is less than the percentage change in the P. It means it may ha happen because of two things either the time required to produce the product is significant. So, even if there is an increase in the price still the producer will not going to supply more or maybe the product is the nature is something that even if the price increases the demand is not going to maybe price increase is not because of increased demand. So, in this case even if they are supplying more there is no market for the product and that is the reason uh, in, in case of inelastic supply the change in the quantity, demand, quantity supply is less than the change in the price. And the typical example we can take of a handicraft uh, furniture or the diamonds, they are the high value goods and even if the price increases, it is not the demand is going to increase or maybe the time required to produce because there is always a limited supply. So, even if the price increases, the uh, supplier immediately not matching with the change in the price and that is the reason this is known, this type of goods comes under inelastic supply because it cannot be match immediately the increase in the price cannot be match immediately. Now, we will see how, how the slope of the inelastic supply curve. If the market price goes up, but the supplier cannot increase production very much this is the scenario of an inelastic supply curve and this generally creates a steeper curve. So, in this case if you look at P 1 is the initial price, Q 1 is the initial quantity demanded and there is an increase in the price from P 1 to P 2 which is on a very higher side and that leads to the subsequent increase in the quantity demanded from Q 1 to Q 2. And uh, if you look at here the Q 1 and Q 2 much 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 less than P 1 and P 2 and that leads to the interpretation that the change in the quantity demanded is less than the change in the price and that is the reason we get the steeper curve and in case of inelastic supply curve the we always get a steeper curve. Now, we will interpret the different value of uh, elasticity if the elasticity of supply taking value of 1, 0 or infinite or less than 0 or greater than 1, how we generally interpret the elasticity of supply. If elasticity of supply is equal to infinite, this is the case of a perfectly elastic supply. It means a small change or a negligible change in the price leads to a greater change in the quantity supply. If elasticity of supply is greater than 1, it is a case of elastic supply as we discussed previously. If elasticity of supply is less than 1, this is the case of inelastic supply what we just discussed before this typical uh, slide. Then, uh, if elasticity of supply is equal to 1, this is unitary elastic supply and how the changes takes place in quantity supply in case of uh, unitary elastic supply, the percentage change in the quantity supply is exactly equal to percentage change in the price. That means, 2 percent change in the price leads to exactly 2 percent change in the quantity supply. Elasticity of supply is equal to 0 that is the perfectly inelastic supply. So, one extreme is when elasticity of supply takes the value which is equal to infinite, it means the negligible change in the price leads to a greater change in the elasticity of supply. And if it is 0, then it is a perfectly inelastic supply that is the other extreme. It means even if there is a significant change in the price, still there is no significant, there is almost insignificant change in the quantity supplier we can say there is no change in the quantity supply the reason being that uh, the reason being that maybe the supply cannot be immediately match with the change in the price or maybe the increase in the production cannot takes place immediately with the increase in the price and that is the reason we need uh, we reach to another extreme of the elasticity of supply that is perfectly inelastic supply where whatever may be the change in the price the quantity supply either do not changes or if it changes that is changes very insignificantly. Then we will say in a typical supply curve uh, what is the range of elastic or what is the range of inelastic or even the supply curve is a straight line then what how we interpret the value. 
So, if the supply curve cuts the price axis that is y axis then the supply is elastic. So, supply curve is a straight line elasticity of supply takes the value which is greater than 1 and if the supply curve cuts the price axis y then the supply is elastic. If the supply curve is a straight line elasticity of supply takes a value which is less than 1 and if the supply curve cuts the quantity axis x then the supply curve is inelastic. It means, if the supply curve cuts the quantity axis this is the inelastic supply curve and if the supply curve cuts the price axis then it is the case of the elastic supply curve. If the supply curves come out of the origin then the supply is unitary elastic. So, if it is cuts the price axis then it is a case of the elastic. If it cuts the quantity axis, this is the case of inelastic. If it comes out of the origin, then the supply curve is unitary elastic. Now, if you summarize all this uh, type of elasticity, whether it is in equal to infinite, it is equal to 0, it is greater than 1, less than 1 or equal to 1. So, if you will take everything in one graph, then this is what which gives us elasticity of supply is equal to 1. Then this gives us elasticity of supply is equal to 0, because there is no change in the quantity supply even if the price is changing. This gives us elasticity of supply is equal to infinite whatever may be the price change in the price uh, change in the price so in la, or small change or the negligible change in the price leads to a greater change in the quantity supply. Then if it cuts uh, may be the price axis then elasticity of supply takes a value which is greater than 1 and if it takes the quantity axis cut the quantity axis then elasticity of supply which is equal to less than 1. So, there are 5 type of elasticity of supply, elasticity of supply equal to infinite, equal to 0, 2 extremes, the midpoint is elasticity of supply is equal to 1 and in between these two the range is elasticity supply is greater than 1 that is relatively elastic and elasticity of supply is less than 1 which is relatively inelastic. So, we will see in a typically supply curve which one is the elastic section which one is the inelastic section or we can say which one is the elastic range and which one is the inelastic range. So, if you take the case of uh, may be a elastic demand curve which is much flatter then the, the bottom section is more elastic and the may be the segment in the top that is less elastic. So, in this case the elasticity of supply takes a value which is greater than 1 and that is the reason we have got a flatter demand, flatter supply curve and here the bottom segment is more elastic and top segment is less elastic. Similarly, if you take a inelastic supply curve, the bottom one is more elastic and the top one is less elastic. So, in a typical supply curve in the different segment, we get the different value of elasticity of supply. Now, we will see what are the factors that influences the elasticity of supply. Like uh, or what are the tip, uh, specific uh, uh, factor those influence the supply has to be elastic or supply has to be inelastic. The first factor is the availability of resources requires to make the product. If the resources are may be uh, available easily or the uh, resources are may be immediately procured then or uh, in this case the uh, the product is more elastic because whenever there is a change in the price or increase in the price immediately this can be matched with the increase in the quantity supply by increase the production. Then what is the amount of time required to make the product that decides whether the supply has to be elastic or supply has to be inelastic. If the time required to make the product is high then the supply uh, supply is inelastic because it cannot be the change in the price immediately cannot change with the in immediately cannot match with the change in the quantity supply. But if the amount of time required to make the product is less then in this case this is the case of a elastic supply because immediately it can be matched. So, the supplier can uh, react to the change in the price immediately. 
skill level of the worker needed to make the product. If the worker are skilled, then maybe the time required is less to produce the product and that is the reason the supply curve is elastic. But if the there is unskilled labor or the skill level of worker is lower or less, in this case generally the supply is inelastic because a small change or maybe a change in the price cannot be matched immediately because the workers they are not uh, maybe that much skilled that they immediately match the requirement from the production or the match the requirement of the increase in the supply. The final one or the fourth factor which influence elasticity of supply is time period for adjustment. If larger is the time period to adjust with the change in the price, it is the case of more elastic and there is if there is less time of for adjustment then the supply is inelastic or we can say less elastic. More is the time period for adjustment, more is the elastic supply, less is the time period for adjustment, less is the elastic supply or we can say is the case of the inelastic supply. So, elasticity of supply generally measures the sensitivity of the supplier with respect to change in the price and it takes different value on the basis of the supplier's responsiveness or the supplier sensitivity, sensitivity for the change in the price and accordingly it takes different value. And few factors what we discussed just now generally they contribute for influencing the supply curve to the uh, more elastic or less elastic. Then we will see what is the impact of tax on price and quantity. In this case, we will take the case of the unit tax which is generally the tax per unit of output sold and we will see how it generally affects the price and quantity and whenever there is a imposition of tax, who generally takes the tax burden whether it is the buyers, whether it is the seller that will analyze or that will see through the graphical representation. So, this is the in this case specifically we are talking about the unit tax which is that is tax per unit of output sold. So, now let us see different cases and different scenario how the tax burden gets shared between the supplier and the buyer. D0 is the demand curve, S0 is the supply curve. There is imposition of tax and the imposition of tax will represent through the decrease in the supply and that leads to decrease in the supply from S0 to S1. Now, this is the equilibrium quantity, this is the equilibrium price. Now, there is imposition of tax and that leads to a change in the supply from S0 to S1 and here we are representing the amount of tax through the change in the supply. So, this is the total amount of tax being imposed. When the supply moved from S0 to S1, the equilibrium point change from E1 to E2. In this case also the price and quantity changes, quantity is Q1 and price is P1. What is the total amount of tax? This is the total amount of tax. So, in this case, now who, who share the taxes over here? Initially, the demand curve is D0, supply curve is S0, quantity equilibrium quantity is Q0, equilibrium price is P0. Imposition of tax that leads to shift the supply curve from S0 to S1 and the difference between two supply curve gives us the tax which is equal to P0. Now, this P 0 T who is paying how much of this P 0 T? Due to change in the supply, now the producer has increased the price from P 0 to P 1. So, this P 1 and P 0 is paid by the consumer in term of increase in the price and the rest of the amount of tax that is P 1 by T that has to be paid by the supplier because this is this is not this part of tax is not being covered by increase in the price. So, a supplier or seller. 
So, imposition of tax is there that leads to shift in the S that is decreasing the quantity increasing the price, but the increase in the price is not equal to the amount of tax being imposed. So, there is some more amount left from the tax amount that is P 1 by P 1 and T. So, this tax is the tax burden is shared by both the consumer and the producer P 0 P 1 is paid by the consumer in term of increase in the price and P 1 T is paid by the buyer paid by the seller or paid by the supplier because partly it has to be shared for both the producer and the consumer. So, in case of unit tax imposed if the both the demand and supply curve they are maintaining their original uh, slope in this case or the original relationship in this case the partly it has been paid by the consumer in term of increase in the price and partly it has been paid by the producer. Now, we will introduce the concept of uh, elasticity of demand and elasticity of supply uh, to the supply and demand curve and then we will see how the tax gets shared between the consumer and the supplier what happens when there is a perfectly inelastic demand curve, what happens when there is a perfectly inelastic supply curve, what happens when there is a perfectly elastic and perfectly uh, elastic demand curve and perfectly elastic supply curve. So, first we will take a case of a perfectly elastic demand curve. Now, what is the shape of a perfectly elastic demand curve? It is parallel to the horizontal axis. Okay. So, this is the demand curve. Now, this is the supply curve, this is the quantity. Okay. Now, there is a imposition of tax that leads to shift in the supply curve from S 0 to S 1. Now, what is the amount of tax? The amount of tax is this much. Okay. Now, who is paying the tax over here? It is not that because price remain constant or very small change in the price, the quantity demanded changes. So, there is if you look at there is no change in the quantity demanded and if there is no change in the quantity demanded the tax amount cannot be or may be if there is a uh, if there is a uh, possibility to increase the price that is not possible here and that is the reason if you look at uh, even if the quantity demanded is changing uh, what is the change in the price may be the change in the price is this much. So, now who is paying the tax over here? Whatever may be the price because any small change in the price that leads to change in the greater change in the quantity demanded and that is the reason the and in this case the entire tax is paid by the supply. So, in case of perfectly elastic demand curve the entire tax is paid by supplier because for any small change in the price the quantity demanded generally changes in a very uh, uh, quantity demanded changes drastically because this is the case of a perfectly elastic demand curve. The consumer is more sensitive in this case. That is the reason the entire tax burden uh, is paid by supplier because they are not able to transfer the tax burden in term of increase in the price. Because if they will increase the price that will lead to shift in the quantity demanded and in term of that also they are going to lose profit if there is no, ch no sale of the product or if the quantity demanded decreases. Then we will see the second case that is the perfectly inelastic demand curve. So, in case of uh, perfectly inelastic demand curve, demand curve takes a uh, shape which is parallel to price axis. Okay. So, this is your demand curve. Now, this is Q 0 this is S 0, this is P 0, P 0 is equilibrium price, Q 0 is equilibrium quantity. Now, imposition of tax S 1, 
this is the total amount of tax this is the new price p1 okay now what is the situation over here demand curve is perfectly inelastic whatever may be the change in the price it is not going to change the quantity demanded that gives us the flexibility for the producer to shift the entire tax burden to the consumer so this is the total amount of tax and if you look at the increase in the price is just equal to the increase in the tax that is p1 p0 is equal to the total tax so in this case the producer has shifted the entire tax burden to the consumer in term of increase in the price and we can interpret here is that in case of inelastic demand perfectly inelastic demand the consumer pays the entire tax burden because there is no change in the quantity demanded even if there is a change in the price and that gives the liberty to producer to shift the entire tax burden to the consumer so in case of perfectly elastic supply the entire tax burden paid by the perfectly elastic demand the entire tax burden is paid by the supplier in case of inelastic demand the perfectly inelastic demand the entire tax burden is paid by the consumer now we'll see what happens in case of perfectly elastic supply and perfectly inelastic supply q0 p0 p perfectly elastic supply perfectly elastic supply imposition of tax moves s0 to s1 and there is a same imposition of increase in the price that is p0 by p1 so in this case the amount of tax is getting transferred to the consumer in term of increase in price because p1 p0 is just equal to the tax and the entire tax burden is paid by by the buyers because the tax total tax amount is shifted to consumer in term of increase in price so perfectly elastic supply curve the tax is paid by the buyers then we'll see the case of the perfectly inelastic supply curve so in case of perfectly inelastic supply curve supply curve takes a uh, value that is uh, parallel to the price axis it means whatever may be the change in the supply it is not going to whatever may be the change in the price it is not going to change the quantity supply so in this case no effect on perfectly inelastic supply there is no effect on price and quantity because imposition of tax will not lead uh, not lead to any change in the supply curve rather but when there is a imposition of tax generally that reduces the profit of the seller so in case of inelastic supply curve there is no effect on price and quantity demanded that is the reason the consumer is not getting affected but there is some influence on the seller that is in term of change in the price or in term of maybe change uh, reduce quantity and that leads to reduce profit for the seller so when there is a imposition of tax that leads to the fact that the tax burden get equally share between the buyers and seller but when we introduce the concept of elasticity if the buyer is more sensitive then it is the tax burden is more on seller if the buyer is less sensitive tax burden is more on buyer similarly if the supplier is more sensitive 
tax burden is more on consumer. If the supplier is less sensitive, generally that reduces the profit of the seller. Now, we will say the specific two cases like sell tax and exercise, excise tax, how that leads to change in the price or quantity demanded or how it affects generally the sellers and consumer. Okay. So, if you summarize the previous uh, uh, analysis of uh, imposition of unit tax, if the demand curve is perfectly inelastic, price increases by the full amount of the tax and supply remain unchanged, the entire tax is borne by the consumer. If the supply curve is perfectly inelastic, there will be no increase in the price or decrease in the supply, the whole of the tax is borne by the supplier. If the demand curve is perfectly elastic, the price does not rise at all and the whole tax is borne by the seller. If the supply curve is perfectly elastic, the price rise by the full amount of tax and the entire tax borne by the consumer. Uh, but given the supply schedule, the greater the elasticity of demand for the good, less will be the tax burden on the consumer. Given the demand schedule, the greater is the elasticity of supply, the greater will be the tax burden borne by the buyer. Then we will introduce two new taxes, sell tax and excise tax in order to understand what is their impact on price and quantity. So, sell tax is the tax imposed on consumer paid directly to the government does not affect the price, consumers pay price plus sales taxes. So, tax is not the part of the price. Less desirable to buy the tax good or service at every given price, demand shift downward and to the left because there is a decrease in the demand when there is a imposition of tax. So, this is the effect of sell tax on demand. Suppose a new law require 0.25 dollar sell tax per cup of coffee. So, if you look at the demand schedule on the left hand side of the graph, when the um, price is changing by 0 0.50 to 0 0.75 to 1, if you look at there is a difference in the quantity before tax and after tax that leads to shift in the demand curve from D to D to D dash. So, it means the effect of sell tax reduces the demand. Then uh, the government imposes uh, tax on producer in case of excise tax, the government imposes uh, tax on producer. Producer pay the tax directly to the government, price does not change, but the cost changes because they are paying a tax to him. Less desirable to produce taxed good or service at every given price, supply shift to the left and upward. So, if you look at due to imposition of excise tax that leads to decrease in the supply and that lead to shift in the supply curve from S to S test. So, if you look at in this case, suppose there is excise tax of 0.25 per cup of coffee that leads to change in the quantity supply that is imposition of tax before and after and that leads to decrease in the quantity supply and uh, graphically the change in the quantity supply is represented uh, from the movement from S to S test. So, irrespective of whether it is sell tax, whether it is excise tax, uh, it generally reduces the demand and supply. In case of sell tax that reduces the demand, in case of excise tax that reduces the supply. So, what is the effect of sell tax? Sell tax suppose this x e per item cause equilibrium price to fall by the same amount less than x e per item, price to supply not same as price to the demander because price plus sell tax is the price to the buyers. And what is the effect of excise tax? Excise tax per uh, item causes the equilibrium price to increase by some amount less than x e per item price to the supplier that is price minus excise tax is not same as the price to the demand. So, in case of sales tax, the price to the consumer is on a higher side and in case of excise tax, the price generally what is part of the cost also in the due course of time generally they shift it to the consumer, but initially when they are paying a excise tax, whatever the price for them that is cost of production for tax that is not equal to the market price what the consumer they pay for it. So, generally in case of imposition of sell tax reduces the equilibrium price, but in case of uh, imposition of excise tax it reduces the equilibrium price. So, when you compare two cases maybe there are 
uh, two type of incidents one is economic incident second one is the legal incidence the division of a tax burden according to who actually pay the tax that is on the basis of the economic incidence and legal incidence is the division of tax burden according to the uh, according to who is required under the law to pay the tax so one is legally and another is the actually who is paying more so the economic incidence of tax independent of its legal incidence now this is the graphical representation of uh, sales tax uh, sell tax and the excise tax how it affects the demand so initially if you look at the first graph left hand top graph the imposition of tax leads to leads to decrease in the demand from d to d des that leads to increase in the price from pf to pg so the price to supplier is pf whereas the price to uh, consumer is pc which includes the price plus the tax and in the right hand side if you look at the top one then uh, imposition of excise tax leads to shift the or decrease the supply from s to s tax and that leads to two type of price one is the price to supplier and second one is the price to demand so in this bo in both the cases if you look at the price is changing so in the left hand side if you look at the uh, 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 maybe the graph which is just below maybe a less cluttered version of the panel a in this case the new supply um, the new uh, demand and maybe the original supply gives us the change in the price and similarly in the right hand panel the lower graph if you look at it's again the change in the supply and change in the demand and exactly whatever the change in the price so excise tax influence the uh, producers and generally sell tax influence the buying behavior of the consumer whereas excise tax influence the selling behavior of the producer then we'll discuss about um, two specific case where the price is decided by the government or the where the price is decided by legally in case of the imbalances and what happens to the situation so consumer if you look at always like the prices to be lower than the actual equilibrium price and when the outcomes of the unregulated market act against the interest of the public people seek legislation that allow the government authority to control the existing price structure of the market sometimes it happens that they perform they collude they make a joint um, collusion and they decide the price in this case generally the uh, interest of public generally the government comes into picture and they fix up a price this type of interference on the part of uh, government with the help of laws of supply and demand is totally different from the case of the imposition of tax this is not the case of taxes and government control of price inevitably prevent the market system from performing its function of rationing goods and services so two type of cases one is price ceiling and it's a type of price ceiling that government authority sometimes used for rental housing and the specific case here is the rent control prevent housing market for reaching equilibrium only when the rents are set below the market equilibrium rent and the typical example is the after the end of world war 2 when there was a sharp increase in the uh, price of the rent or the sharp increase in the housing price or the demand for the housing many city instituted the rent control to prevent the spectacular increase in the rent that were anticipated because there was a increase in the demand and that also leads to the increase in the rent and many cases they practice this rent control generally how this can be applicable in case of in case of controlling the rent to a level which is below the equilibrium rate so typically rent control limit increase in the monthly rental rates or the established rule used to determine the fair monthly rent for housing a varying kind of quality rent generally lower than that would prevail in the equilibrium in the competitive market many supporter of rent control believes that this control benefit lower income people who would otherwise have to pay a higher percentage as their as of their income as rent now how it works generally if you look at this is the supply of housing this is the demand for housing price is nothing but the rent suppose this price in this case is 1000 rupees 
and the quantity is may be suppose 8000 unit. Now, if the rent looks higher generally the public seeks the legislation from the government to charge a lower price. So, in this case if the government fix up a rent which is equal to rupees 500, now what would be the outcome? The demand would be more and the supply would be less. So, suppose this is 10,000 units because of decrease in the rent that leads to increase in the demand for housing to 1000 unit, but the supply of housing will reduces to 6000 unit. So, this leads to shortage. So, whenever there is a rent control and the rent is set much below the equilibrium rent, in this case the demand for housing is more than supply of housing which leads to shortage. Then in this case what is the way out? Because rent was on a higher side that is the reason the public comes to the uh, government support to fix up the rent. And if the rent is lower than the equilibrium rent, generally people they prefer a high demand for housing and the supplies they reduces the supply. So, in this case may be one possible solution is to uh, follow a non rationing rent control and what is the non rationing uh, rent control or non uh, non rationing or the non price may be uh, solution the non price solution is to that first come first serve basis. So, at a specific price even if it is 6000 or even if the rent is 500 only people with up to 8000 they will be entertained not more be beyond 10000. So, the in this case the surplus can be captured on the basis of the first come first serve. So, it is uh, only the 8000 units of housing available at a price of 500 and they should the supplier will only uh, there is binding on the supplier also to supply at least 8000 unit of the housing at the rent of 500. The second case what we will deal uh, here is the opposite of price ceiling is price floor. So, now what is uh, price floor? Okay, so, this effect of rent control is if selling on rent is below the market equilibrium rent, this inevitably result in the shortage of the rental housing what we checked in the previous graph. Rent control do not make renter house less expensive to the tenant, lender respond to the reduction in the possible gain by decreasing the quantity and often the quality of the rental houses supplied. Results is shortage of housing and then we will take the second case that is price floor opposite to the price ceiling this is the minimum price that has to be given or that has to be given by the supplier. Now, what is the typical example here? The typical example is the minimum wage. The producer has to pay wage which is at least minimum that is set by the law. So, to commonly use price floor are minimum wages and the agricultural price support. Minimum wages prohibit employees from paying less than the stipulated wage and agricultural price support generally guarantee farmers a minimum price of their crops when price floor are set above the market equilibrium price and generally this results in the surplus on the market. So, let us see a graphical exam, exa, example of this minimum wage. So, we have a demand curve, we have a supply curve. This is the equilibrium quantity, this is the equilibrium price. Now, what is the equilibrium price here? This is nothing but the wage. So, the, suppose this is 50 rupees is the wage and this is the 30 laborers, this is the labor day. Now, if the minimum wage is set at 40, okay, so just if the minimum wage is set at 60, which is as a higher than the equilibrium, in this case what would be the outcome? The demand would be more, suppose 60 laborer will ready to work when the wage is 60, but the supplier is ready to only give the employment to 20 laborer when the minimum wage is fixed by legally and that is 60. So, in this case what is the outcome? The outcome is surplus. So, in case of minimum wage, if the minimum wage is set above the equilibrium 
weighs that is equilibrium weight is 50 and the minimum weight is 60. It means, it is binding on the supplier to pay the wages equal to 60. In this case, generally the demand for the labor or the demand for the employment will be more that is 60 unit, but whatever the supply of labor the producer is only give ready to give employment to 20 laborer if the wage is set at 60. This lead to surplus in the market and again it is a non price control will come the first come first serve basis this 20 laborer who are ready to work. Uh, uh, they will come first 20 units will be entertained. So, in this case if you look at the real problem again leads to something else uh, when the price is goes on a higher side or the wage is going on a higher side that leads to less employment. So, two cases one is price ceiling which is the price fixed by the uh, government and second one is the price floor this is also price uh, fixed by the government and this is the minimum price and maybe in the first case that was the maximum price that has to be followed in the market. Well, uh, so, with this we completed our second module that is on theory of demand or demand analysis and we will start our third module that is theory of production and cost from the next session onwards. And these are the session references that is being followed or uh, few books, few uh, study material that is being followed for preparing this specific session.